Hi, I'm Rachel Bosch. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Cincinnati. I'm going to talk about how I took a field learning experience and converted it to online. Last year, my partner and I were planning a karst geomorphology field course for the karst field studies program through Western Kentucky University, which would have been delivered at Mammoth Cave National Park. But as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic struck and has drastically affected all of us. Shortly after the world shut down in response to the pandemic in March 2020, the National Association of Geoscience Teachers and the International Association for Geoscience Diversity sent out a call for people to develop remote field experiences in order to facilitate rapid transitions to virtual alternatives to traditional field camp. For me, this was the perfect opportunity to take a portion of the course that was developed for in-person delivery and convert it to online. The learning objectives mapped well from the ones we had constructed for our field course to the online learning objectives set out by NAGT. Here are a few examples of those overlapping goals and how I tailored them for virtual field experiences. Here are the results of that exercise. I created two learning modules about KARST, an introductory activity and a more advanced activity. The introductory activity has the added flexibility that students can complete the entire module using the smartphone. I'll now give you an overview of what these activities cover. The introduction to karst hydrogeology begins by providing resources for students to review the basics of karst hydrology. On the student handout, there are Google Earth links for seven different field areas from around the world. China, Slovenia, the United States, Ethiopia, Brazil, Mexico, and New Zealand. Learners can browse and select among these options for a karst region to focus on for the remainder of the exercise. The advanced module assumes that students have some prior experience in the use of Google Earth and other geographic information systems. Learners using this module are presented with the World Karst Aquifer Map and associated publications. Instead, instead of seven discrete choices, they are presented with the opportunity to use these resources to select a karst area to study. Learners then locate a digital elevation model for their karst area. They bring that DEM into QGIS, reproject it appropriately, and build a hillshade layer for landscape visualization. They then extract elevation contour layers. They modify their contour interval and use layer properties to label index contours. In addition to spelling these steps out in detail on the student handout, I provide instructors with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the activity procedure, including screenshots of the anticipated outcomes. This way, the modules can be available to a wide range of teachers and learners. Students use their topographic maps to interpret the flow patterns of the regions using the rule of Vs. They then discuss why the flow paths look the way they do and what special hazards and considerations they might expect in that hydrogeological situation. And by extrapolation, the hazards and vulnerabilities that may be associated with karst regions. The introductory activity concludes here, and their results can be presented in writing, orally, in or in any way that works for the instructor and students. To continue on with the advanced module, laptop access is needed. Learners will install the Topographic Analysis Kit, or TAK, app to their computers. This software uses a set of MATLAB functions written by Adam Forte 
which build upon the functionality of Topo Toolbox by Wolfgang Schwanghart and Dirk Schurler. This activity only uses the Make Streams function, but hopes are that some students' interest will be piqued to further explore landscape analysis. Using Make Streams, learners have this tool perform automated flow routing. As in sh is shown on this slide, there may be significant differences between the manual flow routing on the left and the flow paths modeled by the routing algorithms in TAK. Learners are called upon to speculate about the source of those differences and then to consider the strengths and weaknesses of each approach. They then decide which method they think provides better results. This conclusion may vary based upon the student or their selection of field study location. The synthesis for the advanced module is more involved than that for the introductory module. Students develop a chronology of detailed regional description using the analyses they performed throughout the activity. They consider which parts of their story may need more support and work those into scientific hypotheses. Then, they discuss possible experimental approaches to test their hypotheses. So, I want to tell you, I was super proud about getting these modules published on CERC, but beyond sending notices across email and posting links to social media, I spent some time pondering the question, what would be the best way to promote the virtual learning experiences that people created this year? As I contemplated this, an email showed up from a student I had TA'd a couple of years ago in my advisor's geomorphology class. They were asking about whether there were any virtual capstone opportunities to help them meet their graduation requirements on time. This provided me with the motivation to organize some of these great products into learning pathways that we could offer to students at the University of Cincinnati. I sorted existing modules from the CERC Teaching with Online Experiences page into three interest-based tracks. Environmental Geology, Planetary Geology, and a more traditional geology route. Since these activities were uploaded with information about how long they should take to complete, I was able to design each path such that they have an estimated instructional equivalent to 28 days in the field, approximating a four to six week field camp, and they would thus each be suitable for a senior capstone experience. This has been announced to the departmental community as a virtual capstone option available for students. This list of resources I drew upon for the Karst virtual field activities is also available through the activity pages on CERC. And here are links to each of the modules I included in the virtual capstone pathways. Thank you for attending my talk today. I apologize that I am unable to be here in person to take your questions right now, but I will be happy to hear from you by email. My address is boshrf at mail.uc.edu. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to discuss, feel free to send me a message.